The Pilgrim's Adventures, Squanto, by the Central Texas Mayflower Colony of the Texas Society of Mayflower Descendants. Written and presented by Betty Prince, a descendant of Pilgrim William Bradford, Pilgrim Richard Warren, Pilgrim Francis Cook, and Pilgrim John Cook. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Hopkins. I live in Plymouth Colony with my husband, Stephen Hopkins. Stephen and I came to Plymouth on the Mayflower in 1620 with our children, one of whom was born on the voyage. Stephen was hired by the merchant adventurers who sponsored the Mayflower voyage due to his previous experience in the new world. Stephen had been in Jamestown Colony for a few years where he had dealt with the Native Americans and learned some of their language. We both survived the first winter in Plymouth and in the spring of 1621, moved into one of the houses we had built on the shore. In the course of getting settled, the colony encountered local Native Americans. Two of them were Massasoit and Tisquantum. Tisquantum was known among the colonists by his shortened nickname Squando, a contraction of Tisquantum. Squando was a native of Patuxet, the abandoned Indian village where Plymouth Colony was established. He had, however, lived in England and spoke good English. Stephen invited Squando to live with our family while Squando provided invaluable help to the colonists in learning to live and plant crops in the strange soil of our new home. Sitting around the table on cold winter evenings, we gradually learned Squanto's story. Like Stephen, he had crossed the Atlantic by ship several times and lived a very unusual life, ending up feeling like a man without a tribe. He grew up in the village of Patuxet, which was part of the Wampanoag Tribe Confederation. In 1614, an English expedition headed by John Smith sailed along the coast of Maine in Massachusetts Bay collecting fish and furs. When the first ship was full, John Smith returned to England and left Thomas Hunt in command of the second ship to complete the haul of cod and proceed to Malaga, Spain, where there was a, a market for dried fish. Hunt, however, decided to enhance the value of the shipment by adding human cargo. He sailed to Plymouth Harbor, supposedly to trade with the village of Patuxet where Squanto lived. He lured him and 19 other Indians aboard his vessel by promising to trade with them. Once the natives were on board, they were confined. The ship then sailed across Cape Cod Bay where they abducted seven more people from the Nauset tribe and then set sail for Spain. Most of the natives were sold into slavery, but Squanto was fortunate that a group of Catholic friars appeared, took notice of him and blocked his sail. He freely wandered around Malaga, Spain for several months, hearing another new language and confused by their strange way of life but observing and learning to survive. Eventually, he met an English merchant who gave him transportation to England. There Squando met John Slaney, the treasurer of the Newfoundland Colony, Con uh, Newfoundland Company, which underwrote fishing expeditions to the North Atlantic. Slaney was clearly impressed by the intelligence of the Native American and the business opportunity he presented. Squanda was delighted when John offered to teach him English so he could serve as a translator and guide in the company's trading business with the natives in America. This not only gave Squanda employment, but also the possibility of getting home to Patuxet. Squando's first assignment in the summer of 1616 was to work with Captain John Mason in a settlement in Newfoundland. He was so close to home, but there was no way to make it all the way south to Patuxet. So he, he returned to London with the ship. While back in England, he met an American Indian named Pocahontas from the Jamestown colony in Virginia. 
even though they spoke different tribal languages and had to converse in English. It was so good to meet another Native American and share their experiences and observations of the English and their strange land. In 1619, his dreams came true. During a second trip in Newfoundland, Squatta was introduced to Captain Dermer, an associate of John Smith from the Jamestown colony. He offered his services in exchange for passage back to Wampanoag country. There had been rumors of a great dying having swept through the area, and Squanto was eager to get back and find his family, but he was not prepared for what he found upon return to his village. Once the ship skirted the Massachusetts Bay coastline, there was no one on the shore, which usually would have been crowded with people tending cornfields and waving furs at passing ships to sing, signal an eagerness to trade. When the ship docked and they began hiking toward Patuxet, Squanto was horrified to see bones and skulls of the dead lying above the ground, portraying a tragedy of epic proportions. Seeing that, he became desperate to locate any remaining family and friends and led Dermer and the crew inland for miles toward the community of New Mascot. The group finally came upon a group of shell-shocked survivors who remembered Squanto. The tribe members were thrilled to see each other until the set natives recognized the captain from previous regrettable visits in which the outcome had not been good. Captain Dermer and his crew raced toward their ship and hastily sailed away, but Squanto remained in his native land, which he barely recognized. For the next few months, he wandered through the woods, trying to reestablish his old way of life with the few remaining Wampanoag Indians. Besides all the death, the epidemic seemed to have destroyed their spirit as well. In addition, Squando himself had experienced new things and learned new ways. He was now experienced at dealing with both the Native Americans and the English. A few months later, an English ship named the Mayflower appeared off of Cape Cod. For many days, several of them watched the activities on the ship from a distance. The colonists seemed to the natives to be different from the English explorers and traders that had previously appeared on these shores. The women and children were on board, meaning they were planning to stay. Many of them appeared to be sick and starving. One day, the Englishmen found some of the natives' hidden seed corn, which angered the natives. This was a boiling point for the natives and an opportunity for Squando to make the difference between war and peace. Squando was able to step in and calm the situation. On March 17th, Squando walked unaccompanied and unarmed into the circle of crude huts in which the English were living. He said loudly, I speak English. They were surprised he spoke their language and a cautious friendship began. A few days later, Squanto went to the colony with three other Wampanoags, carrying beaver furs to trade and dried her herring as a gift. The settler's governor, William Bradford, proclaimed that he was a special instrument sent from God for their good beyond expectation. Squanto became a friend of my husband Stephen and also of Colony Governor Bradford. My good husband Stephen invited Squanto to stay in our home since they had much in common. Squanto stayed in Plymouth and lived among us for 20 months, acting as an interpreter, guide, and advisor. He introduced our people to the fur trade, which would provide va valuable beaver pelts to help pay off our debt back in England. He also taught us how to plant and fertilize native crops with fish. This skill proved vital since the seeds we had brought from England mostly failed in the different type of soil. In late September or early October, the harvest was in and we set aside some time to rejoice together and thank God. Four of our men went out hunting and brought back enough food for a week, while the five of us women who had survived the winter, along with the girls, prepared a meal. To our great surprise, 
More than 90 natives joined us unannounced. Squando introduced them and managed to remove our concerns at the large number of unexpected guests. To show their good faith, the natives brought in five deer to share in the, at the feast. For the next three days, the two peoples, in spite of their differences, feasted and entertained together. This was a day that will never be forgotten. Squanto remained among the colonists and tried not only to be a translator and guide for the settlers, but also a mediator between them and the Indians. The natives were unaccustomed to a written treaty and the English did not understand the ways of the Indians. In the process of trying to mediate, Squanto offended both sides and perhaps created even more distrust. However, he told us his proudest moment was when Governor Bradford said, the pilgrims would never have survived without Squanto. Presented by Betty Prince, written by Ann Bell and Betty Prince, photos by Curtis Wyman, music by Betty Prince, technical production by Ann Bell.